I would say that the largest unmet need is in progressive MS. Although we've had some advances, it's definitely the group of patients that have the least options. Relapsing, remitting patients now have a myriad of options with different routes of administration, um, mechanisms of actions and routes of administration, whereas the progressive population has a very small set. Um, and also the efficacy of most of those medications is not as robust in the relapsing or remitting. So I would say that um, treatment in that realm is definitely where we need to advance things most. So I would say that for primary progressive, the biggest advance was the approval of ocrelizumab for primary progressive a few years ago. Um, it was exciting to finally have something that we could offer patients. Um, and it's definitely changed that discussion more. Before it was completely based on symptom management, um, kind of how we monitor the disease, and now we actually have a treatment to, to offer them. Um, Saponamod is interesting, and I think that that is a, it's a good question of who is going to be the likely the best responders. Um, it's a SP1 modulator, which the other SP1 modulator on the market is Fungolamod, which is approved for relapsing remitting MS. And the trials looking at Saponamod um, in progressive MS did kind of give more evidence that there is kind of a subpopulation that likely is a more likely to respond. And those are the patients that have kind of some clear evidence of still active inflammatory disease. So patients that have had more recent relapses that have just kind of transitioned into more of a progressive um, phase or patients that have kind of clear evidence of new disease activity on MRI um, are likely going to be good responders. And I think it's a little bit harder to gauge the patients that have had kind of MRIs that have been stable for years, um, no kind of very very large fluctuations in their symptoms or new symptoms. Um, so I think that definitely kind of those more that active type population is going to be kind of a more known responder and then how it plays out in um, the larger kind of secondary progressive population is a little harder to know. I think uh, the harder question is not just treatment, but it's also when is somebody considered progressive MS. So um, a primary progressive patient is a little bit easier to define because they come into you and they say, I've had a year or two of worsening function in my walking. You know, I started to trip over my right foot and now I'm dragging it more consistently. And there's no sort of superimposed fluctuations, which is kind of this clear, um, downward progression. I think the harder thing is sort of knowing when someone transitions to secondary progressive because there's not actually a well-defined definition of that. Um, so primary progressive patients, identifying them early, we often will start them as soon as we diagnose them. The question of do we um, treat secondary progressive MS or do we continue treatments throughout secondary progressive um, I think is a harder one that we don't know the answer to as well. And as more treatments come on the market for progressive MS, knowing whether we should transition people from a relapsing remitting treatment to a more progressive treatment, I think will be something that we need to, to wade through. So I think quantitative MRI is going to be very helpful, but I think that it's hard to utilize on a regular basis because it hasn't been very well standardized. Um, so um, it's easy to kind of say, yes, there's a lesion or not a new lesion. Yes, there's an enhancing Gadolin lesion. No, there's not. But when we get to things like brain volume, there's a lot of different techniques to um, quantify that. And so it's a little hard to assign a specific number that would trigger a change. Also, because most of the clinical trials um, and sort of our understanding of how to use our disease-modifying treatments are not based on quantitative MRI. It's something that I think we need to figure out how to use, so we need to come up with meaningful thresholds of change um, that would kind of suggest we should consider um, starting or, or changing therapies. 
Um, we also need to kind of uh, find ways to structure that into MRI reports so that when you're in your clinical workflow, you have those quantitative MRIs to actually use in real time. So um, it's something that we're more and more trying to do. I know at the Cleveland Clinic that we have in-house methods and we've been working on developing more quantitative MRI and figuring out how to use it um, in our real world kind of cohort. But um, I would say that there's not kind of a set parameter of how to use it in clinical practice. So I think that it, they're helpful in quantifying symptoms from patients, and so I can say, tell you that at the Cleveland Clinic, we, at pretty much all of our follow-up MS visits, we ask patients um, NeuroQual, which is 12 different um, domains of various symptoms, um, and you know it'll be things like fatigue and so when a patient's coming into your office and saying you know I'm, I'm fatigued and we've been working on that symptom management and they come in six months later and they say I don't know I think I might be more fatigued I'm not sure some of these patient reported outcomes kind of at least help us assign a number to that to say well it seems like you were kind of telling me six months ago that you're about the same and we say okay well maybe we just need to, to treat things a little bit um, or oh wow yeah your score has kind of significantly gone up here we really need to rework what we're doing to treat that symptom so um, I think that they are a helpful additive the the problem with them is that some of them are very specific and so you don't necessarily know when to kind of ask um, a full gamut of patient reported outcomes in clinical practice or when you should kind of narrow in on specific things and then also just like with quantitative MRI kind of understanding thresholds of change within those uh, patient reported outcomes that truly triggers a change um, I think is something that needs a further work.